Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's take a look at another example of dealing with a conservative vector field and trying to find the work done by integrating along a line integral along the path x squared plus y squared equals a squared. Now it's not of course immediately clear why this would be a conservative vector field. The vector field is defined as y squared in the i direction minus x squared in the j direction. The general form will be p in the i direction plus q in the j direction which is the left, which will then represent the left portion of the integral of Green's theorem. Now, if you chart out that vector field on the xy plane in all four quadrants, you can see that over here, the vector field follows apparently like a circular path, but then here it's in the opposite direction. So you can see that as you go around, here you get work that would be positive moving in the clockwise direction, or if you want to move in the counterclockwise direction, this would be negative work, and then this would be positive work, and it does appear there's some symmetry there, and you might expect zero work done as you integrate along a circular path of x squared plus y squared equals a squared. Well, we'll see in just a moment. Now, when we evaluate this portion of Green's theorem over here, notice that q is minus x squared and p is y squared, we end up with minus 2x minus 2y. It is not a constant, so it's not an easy integral. It's not simply the constant times the area of the path, enclosed by the path, and it's not equal to zero, which is a sure indicator that it's a conservative vector field, and so the work done would be zero. So there's no immediate indicator here that this is actually a conservative vector field, although graphically, it appears to be one. So let's go ahead and work it out to see what we get. And again, we'll see a nice example and we'll get a better understanding of Green's theorem. So we're going to evaluate the line integral on a complete closed path defined by this of, and that would then be p times dx plus q times dy. And of course, we know that's going to be equal to the integral over the region enclosed by the path of the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y times dA. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Now we already know what this is equal to because we calculated it over here. So we know that this is going to be equal to the work done and so the work done is going to be equal to the double integral of minus 2x minus 2y times dA evaluated over the region enclosed by that circular path. Now since it's a circular path, we might be better off by using, hmm, by using, yeah, I think polar coordinates. Let's go ahead and try to do that and see what we get. Well, first of all, we're going to, we're going to factor out a minus 2. So this is equal to a minus 2 times the double integral over the region of x plus y times dA. But if we look at a polar situation and we want to have a small dA that looks like that, our dA looks like that, which is going to be equal to, well, the path this way will be r times d theta. So that would be r times d theta for this portion right here. And that would be a dr like that. So dA can be expressed as r dr d theta. And x plus y here, let's see what we can do with that. Hmm. So I was hoping I'd have an x squared plus y squared, but I don't. So what I need to do instead, I need to then say that x can be equal to a times the cosine of theta and y can be replaced by a times the sine of theta. And if I plug that in here for x and y, and I replace dA by what dA is equal to in polar coordinates, let's see what we end up with. So this would be equal to minus 2 times the double integral over the region. And uh, x plus y will then become a times the cosine of theta plus a times the sine of theta times we have r dr d theta. Okay, so we can factor out an a. We have a cosine and a sine, so let's do that. So that's equal to, let, 
make sure I have enough room here, so that would be equal to minus 2a times the double integral of cosine of theta plus the sine of theta, and then we multiply that times r dr d theta. The line here so we don't get confused. All right, so we're going to integrate over r, and we're going to integrate over theta. Now for r, that's easy because r will go from 0 to a, and theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. So those will be the integrals, the, the limits of integration when we integrate from 0 to r, or 0 to a, and then around the circle. Let's see, let's do r first. So this becomes equal to minus 2a times. So we still have from 0 to 2 pi for the theta. So we have the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta, d theta. So we still have to integrate that, but r now becomes r squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to a. And of course that becomes a squared over 2 times this a, which would be a cubed over 2. So this would become equal to minus 2a cubed over 2. The 2's cancel out, and then we still have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta times d theta. All right, now let's integrate that and see what we get. So this is equal to minus a cubed times the cosine of theta integrated becomes the sine of theta, sine of theta, and the sine of theta integrated becomes the minus cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. This is equal to minus a cubed times. Now, whenever we plug a 0 or a 2 pi in for the sine of theta, that is always automatically 0, so we don't have to worry about the sine of theta. This will go to 0. But now let's plug in what we have here. So this becomes minus the cosine of 2 pi, which is 1, minus the cosine of 0, which is also 1. Of course, we have the minus here, so it becomes minus 1. And here we have a 1 minus a minus 1, that becomes minus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0. So this is minus a cubed times 0, which is equal to 0. So here we go. Work done for that line integral. When we have a vector field that's defined by this equation right here, we go one complete closed path. We end up with work done is equal to 0, which would indicate that this is indeed a conservative vector field. Now, we didn't get that sense right away because this component right here was not a constant value. If it had been a constant value, it would have been equal to zero, and it would have been really easy to see that, yes, it's a conservative vector field, and the work done is zero. But since it was not a constant, like we indicated in the previous video, we end up with a non-constant value here, a value of a function of x and y. We have to go through the actual integration to determine what the actual work done is. It could be zero if it's conservative, and, it's, and it will be a non-zero quantity if it's a non-conservative vector field. But that's how we use Green's theorem, and it's still a very easy, nice way to solve line integrals and to solve for the work done by integrating through a vector field on a closed path. And that's why we like to use Green's theorem.